My name is John, and today we'll re be reading I Cannot Handle All This Winning by Kurt Schlichter on Town Hall, posted April 30th, 2018. Kurt Schlichter was personally recruited to write conservative commentary by Andrew Breitbart. He is a successful Los Angeles trial lawyer, a veteran with a master's in strategic studies from the United States Army War College, and a former stand-up comic. Perhaps the greatest thing about one of our side's many decisive victories last week, and there were a lot of victories, is that now the liberals have to refer to my friend Rick Grinnell as ambassador, or better yet, as Your Excellency. But it isn't just that America got one of the best diplomats, finally, on the job in Germany that obscure, insignificant upper volta of Europe. I am a conservative traditionalist, so Burkina Faso will always be upper volta. It's that in fighting his confirmation, the Democrats again highlighted their moronic intersexual hypocrisy to voters who may have forgotten what idiots they are. You know, Respect for women and for people of different views and whatnot are essential for an ambassador. Any in the world, announced noted advocate for women, Senator Robert Menendez, who allegedly focuses advocacy on underage women in the Dominican Republic. And of course, the silly likes of Chris Murphy. He's a Connecticut Democrat senator who's merely a clown not one who is a pretend war hero, huffed and puffed about how Rick insulted women, in part because Rick was mean to Rachel Maddow. But everyone should be mean to Rachel Maddow. That's a plus. Anyway, Rick is gay, and this was all some sort of lapdog whistle to the Democrat base to let their latent homophobia run free with the notion that gay men are gay because they hate girls or something. But libs can't escape the truth. Donald Trump just appointed the highest ranking openly gay officer in the federal government, and he's a conservative Republican. And that's just win-win. There are so many. Even the losses like the sad withdrawal of Admiral Ronnie Jackson from his nomination to head the VA have a silver lining. The people of Montana who hate cowardly and craven mean girl antics will no doubt punish that flat top Senate creep John Tester at election time for his scummy lies about an outstanding American warrior. How about North Korea? No biggie, right, CNN? Time for another, another couple hits with Stormy Daniels' lawyer about how the wizened stripper is finally going to take down Trump. Don't look at the men behind the curtain making peace in Korea. Nothing to see. Gee, looks like Trump is making it rain only with peace instead of sig singles. The Democrat foreign policy cabal is coming in glued as Trump notches another triumph. I would sure hate to be Obama latte fetcher Ben Rhodes right now, but then I can't be him because I never worked in an administration that kissed the Molov's collective Khomeini and that was unable to get North Korea talking about denuclearization. Also, I am not a failed novelist. The Russian collusion thing is dying a slow, agonizing death but not before the investigations reveal the stunning depth of corruption of Obama's regime. It's only a matter of time until Andy McCobb rolls. And please, James Comey, you looming doofus, keep running your mouth. There is so much winning. Besides Rick, we got Mom, Mike Pompeo in as Secretary of State, and Mitch McConnell is confirming judge after non-pinko judge. Every Trump judge is one less black-robed activist who thinks that the Constitution makes it mandatory that you taxpayers chip in to kill babies, but that has nothing to say about your right to keep and bear arms. 
speaking of killing kids, and the need for every free citizen to own multiple modern rifles and ammo and be proficient in their use, former Great Britain has provided several cautionary examples of what a world run by Democrats would look like. Someone called Count Dankula got convicted of a crime and fined for saying words the elite disliked. Another thought criminal got jailed for eight months. Eight months of his life in prison for flipping off a traffic camera. And the, the Brit Stasi went on Twitter to brag about it and to threaten the sheep into submission. Worst of all, because his parents had a bad attitude about the UK single-payer system deciding to kill their son, the Brit government decreed that the parents of Alfie Evans could not take him to Italy to try to save his life. The National Health Service finally got its wish and killed Alfie. That's what the government can do when it rules subjects instead of serves in armed citizenry. Think about that the next time some liberal scoffs about death panels and your crazy ideas about not giving up your guns so you can resist tyranny. If any good has come out of this f fascist atrocity, it will be to wake people the hell up to the future if the Democrats take power. And libs can't let the truth get out. Did you notice that not at all creepy gun-grabbing kid disappeared from your TV screens just about the same time that the NRA announced that American patriots had set donation records for giving to America's foremost civil rights organization? We're winning so much they got to spin our wins. The economy is running at 2.8% growth. Not enough? Well, then just wait until next quarter. Tariffs? Our opponents are folding. Unemployment is in freefall, and people are dropping off the, of the food stamp program. This is a tragedy for liberals, because they feed on those who need handouts. Remember, good news for Americans is bad news for Democrats. We won the special election in Arizona, which the left spun as a loss because the victory there was not as victorious as Trump's had been. But we all know that the Democrats were super motivated this year to once and for all stop normal Americans from having any say in their own governance because liberals have stopped hiding what they really want to do, like disarm us and imprison us and kill us. Normals like us are starting to get motivated. We won this spe special election in Arizona, which the left spun as a loss. Hi. Hi, Ryan, kids. I'm here to hang out with you. Uh, do you like the Def Leppard? It rocks. Mom, make Dad go back to Congress. But perhaps the most culturally significant win involves Kanye West and someone called Chance the Rapper who apparently needs to be distinguished from Chance the Poultry Inspector and Chance the Proctologist. Chance the Rapper morphed into Chance the Wuss when he kind of sort of backtracked about his thought crime of saying black people don't have to be Democrats. But whatever. This is still huge. Major black celebrities are refusing to be told what they can and cannot think and are actively pushing back against the backlash. And there's a ton of backlash. The Democrats cannot afford to lose their lock on the minority vote. But minorities are now openly asking the question that terrifies liberals. What have you done for us lately besides run your Chardonnay guzzling mouths? Don't be down. Don't be discouraged. We're winning. And somewhere in a dark room, Thelonia Milhouse Von Pantsuit sits sucking down tumblers of Canadian club and dreaming of the American Venezuela that might have been. So smile and try to endure all this winning. This video is a production of the School of the White Crane. My name is John Brooker and you can reach me through commentary on this video or through my Gmail listed here. Please share this video with family and friends and on social media. 
May God richly bless you.